laser sights increase confidence regardless of experience level. Whether you're learning the fundamentals or overcoming aging eyes, Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you. The number one national voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. Remember that, Tom Gresham here. If you'd like to join us, 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Of course, we're talking about Father's Day. we got stories about uh, hunting or shooting with your dad. We'd love to have those as well. A lot of things going on. We were talking about, oh gosh, a lot of news stories. One of the things you hear, of course, is that um, it almost seems as though when you talk to the gun ban groups, I will not call them gun control groups anymore, the gun ban groups, it's like they have preempted and they say, well, of course, women are going to be in favor of gun bans. Women are going to be in favor of gun control. Women are going to be in favor of and going, really? You don't speak for all women. No, you don't get to do that. Well, you know what? Some of the women kind of had that attitude and say, no, no, you don't speak for us. Joining us right now is, of course, top competitive shooter, just back from a really good run in France, by the way. Diana Muller joins us uh, about the D.C. Project. Hey, Diana. Hi. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. And you had some fun in France, did you not? Oh, my gosh. It was a really nice trip. I had never been to France, and... I found it to be very, very uh, likable, very easy to travel around. You know, we're driving on the right side of the road. Correct. The correct <laughs> side of the road. We're dry. You know, you could drink the tap water. The uh, customs didn't give us any problems coming in, coming out. And so the trip was amazing. Well, and tell to people, top it off. Tell people off, what you we, did. Come on, come on, come on. Tell them what you did. Well, it was the international uh, IPSC world shotgun match. And uh, in the individual competition, I got second behind Lena. Uh, so I brought home a silver silver medal there, and then uh, Lena, Becky Ackley, uh, Katie Francis, and I were the ladies' standard team, and we brought home gold. So uh, we brought home some uh, hardware for sure, and it was uh, a, a nice end to a very long trip. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I think it's just wrong that women are shooting at all. I just think you guys just really need to cut this out. <laughs> I don't. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. <laughs> well, congrats! I know that was tons of fun, and what a bunch of fun uh, folks out there! I mean, you know, very competitive shooters, but also, I mean, and I've seen oh, you guys at Bianchi Cup, and all. You guys are just friends as well. Yeah, it's a it's a big family, and I I tell people um, about my travels and things, and I'm like, you know, I see the people I shoot with more than I see my own family. So I have to yeah. schedule the time that I get to go see my own family. And uh, I always like to hashtag uh, love my three gun family because we really are. Uh, we really are like family. We really are. So, all right. So t- what is the DC project and who's doing this? Okay. The DC project was something that kind of popped into my head about three years ago. And I was um, a tourist, me and the Mitchell and Ryan were, um, on bookend weekends near D.C. Uh, shooting matches. So we thought we'd go to D.C. and be tourists. And a friend of mine said, do you want a uh, meeting with your legislator, your congressman? I was like, yeah, okay. I guess that's what you do when you come there, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. That's where the legislators live, so I might as well go see him. But it was just a light bulb moment that I had when I was sitting in that meeting with him. I was like, hey, is there something that we should be doing as professional shooters to reach out to these legislators who seem to be a little bit misinformed and uneducated about uh, firearm, firearm safety and regulations and things like that. Um, And Mm -hmm. so it just kind of started from there. And then I kept chewing on it and kept chewing on it. And I was like, you know, it's kind of um, women can kind of speak louder, uh, stronger on the matter because we break the stereotype. You know, exactly. you going at, you going to D.C. and meeting your legislator as a Second Amendment supporter isn't a surprise, but it kind of is when you have the diversity that we have with 50 women, one from every state, because I started to realize I'm only going to be able to talk to Oklahoma people. Um, hmm. I'm going to need somebody from every state to go with me to talk to their legislators. So I just started kind of, um, you know, gathering 
herding cats, I call it, and uh, gathering friends and meeting new people and Mm -hmm. um, getting new stories. And we have uh, amazing stories from amazing people. We've got people that you may know from the competitive world, like uh, Gabby Franco. She's a naturalized citizen who has seen her country, her native country of Venezuela, lose their gun rights. So she's a powerful voice. We've We've got uh, women who were uh, prior military, prior uh, prior law enforcement. We've got grandmas, moms, granddaughters, and three generations from uh, one family go. Uh, Cheryl Todd from Arizona. And um, so, what happens when about, you get there? What do you do? So we kind of treat it like a match. We break up into small groups. We have a team leader, somebody who's been there, done that, and kind of knows you know, their way around uh, geographically as well as conversations. And we go in as small groups of four, five, six people, and we tell them who we are. It's all about the relationship. We're not there to tell them that we want them to vote a specific way. We're obviously a Second Amendment supporting organization. But we just want to tell you about me and my background and who I am and make me as a gun owner, a human again, because the left has done such an amazing job of bastardizing and demonizing us Mm -hmm. that they really need to see uh, real gun owners. And you you know what they've done to the NRA? The NRA has a huge black cloud because their their propaganda is just hammering us as NRA members. And I think it's important that they see that I'm not the demon that you think I am or that you talk about, and I do care about children just because I'm not willing to give up my guns, which is an irrational thought to me because I don't think that's going to stop, you know, gun violence. Right. So uh, it's all about the relationship and shaking their hand, and um, those people that are against us and hate hate us, um, they kind of like that coal miner moment with Hillary. And uh, she had to come face to face with somebody that she had been demonizing. And mm-hmm. she, mm-hmm. so that's kind of what it is for the people who are against uh, gun rights and gun ownership. And, and then and, for the people and, who are, go ahead. I guess, and you, to your point, and you don't look like who they think they are demonizing. They have an image in their head of right. the knuckle dragging, mouth breathing uh, gun <laughs> owner, backwoods gun owner. And then you guys show up. And it's a whole bunch of very nice, yeah. pleasant, uh, generally yeah, good-looking lawyers. women, if I, if yeah. I can say that. Uh, yeah. And you surprise them. Yeah, we do. And then the people who do support the Second Amendment, they need to see us and hear from us and to let them know that they are on the right road and that we're behind them and we support them. So it, we really can't meet a bad person. As soon as we step into D.C. proper uh I'm, you know, smiles are on, engaged, and you're shaking hands and kissing babies and uh, destroying their <laughs> their uh, the stereotypes. Their, their talking points, yeah. Well, so this is your creation. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I guess so. You, 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 once once again, you have started something where you're thinking, you know, I don't know where this thing's going to go, but here we go. True, true. I was actually inspired by a friend of mine who lost her husband in the in war, and she was uh, it handled so poorly that she made it her mission to go to D.C. She moved to D.C. and changed their policies. So mm. I saw one woman, Jane Horton, um, giving KIA bracelets to everyone from the president of the United States down to uh, probably the janitor. And uh, she, you know, through her, she was the one that set me up with the first congressman. And it was just like, hmm, maybe I can do it. So and that's happening this week. Mess. That's happening this week, right? Yes, we are going to this will be our third year that we're going as a group to meet in D.C. Um, so there are several components to it. Obviously, we make the small meetings on Capitol Hill. And then Friday afternoon, we have a rally. I'm not a rally person. Rallies kind of scare me in the beginning because as a conservative, <laughs> that's not me. Mm-hmm. But we do it very tastefully, and, and uh, it's done very well. So I'm pretty proud of it, and we continue to do it year after year. And uh, some of our girls speak. Uh, Dick Heller is going to speak this year. Because it is the 10th, um, by the way, it's the 10th anniversary of the Heller ten, decision. 10th anniversary, yes. Some of yeah. our girls are actually speaking at a Heller deal uh, on Tuesday night there in D.C. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, I, you're also going to have a chance to meet my family there. 
Yes, I've recruited uh, your daughter-in-law. My daughter-in-law is, is going. She is the re- Louisiana, Louisiana representative and bringing their uh, eight- and five-year-old daughters. Awesome. Awesome, so, and I'm looking, forward to, I'm looking forward to meeting them. Yeah, that, that'll be fun. And so it'll be uh, Ryan and Lisa and the girls, and so that'll be their first time. And I was I got to tell you, I was surprised. She was approached on this, and she, she's never been an activist or anything, although she start, she went with us to the Louisiana legislature two or three times this year when we were really fighting back some bad gun bills, and she got so energized. It was kind of like she really saw the face of some of these people that I would have to char- characterize as loons, calling yeah. for all these crazy gun control. She said, well, that's just nuts. And it was like you flipped a switch. And so be careful. You may have uh, created a monster here. <laughs> a good monster. That's right, a good monster, a good a good like, mom monster. So you know, once again, you got your, you know, Pilates, uh, yoga teaching, uh, gun owner, and gun site graduate. So be careful. Exactly. And that's what that's what we want to put forward. We want to, we want to crash those stereotypes and let them know that um, – a, we we uh, support the Second Amendment, but B, we don't think that um, you know we want to keep the kids safe too. That's kind of the talking yep. point of the yep. left these days: is that you obviously don't care about children because you won't give up your guns, and right. it has not, one has nothing to do with the other. So, um, yeah. Right, if people, Diane, a, if people want to know more about the DC Project, they go to what? A girl and a gun? Where's the is that the DC best place? Project? Well, they can just go to dcproject.info. I n f o. Okay. And that will take them to a girl and a gun website page that has generously donated and created everything on their page about the DC project. Um, and there's links in, in there. We have a couple of, uh, there's a GoFundMe. There's, there's oh, there's uh, one thing. If you want to help and you want to donate money, get mm-hmm. in on the raffle. There's a raffle for a 1911, a 45 caliber 1911. Um, auto ordinance. It's just, you know, the gun is cool in and of itself, but it has Rosie the Riveter on the side. It's got some embellishments that are amazing embellishments. Um, And and I don't even know what it is, honestly. I can't tell without touching it. I don't know if it's, it doesn't look like a Cerakote. It looks almost like an etching. Wow, that is neat. I'm I'm eager to see that. So those are $20 raffle tickets. And and, uh, if you go to dcproject.info, um, let me see if it's on there. I'm, I'm, it's uh, not on there yet. Uh, so okay. I just, I'm on there right now. So it'll, the it'll Valkyrie, pop up. There is a, um, how about I do this? There's a BDC project page, Facebook page. Right. And ah. I will make sure it's on there. Okay. So the, look for the DC project on Facebook. I got to run Diana, but you guys have a ton of fun. Say hello. Uh, you you get a chance to meet. And I, I said gun site. Actually, uh, Lisa is a Thunder Ranch graduate with Clint Smith. So uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All there right, you go. We'll you guys have fun. All right. Thanks a bunch. You take care. Yeah. Proud of her. Uh, proud of the family. 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. Crimson Trace announces LaserGuard Pro, designed for today's most popular concealed carry firearms. Combining a red or green laser sight with 150 lumen light and featuring instinctive activation, LaserGuard Pro takes personal defense to the next level. Available now for the Smith & Wesson Shield. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you and to learn more about why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, 
Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Your everyday carry advantage. The new M&P Shield M2.0 pistol from Smith & Wesson has the enhancements of the M2.0 line with aggressive grip texture and a crisp and lighter trigger pull. Extremely thin and lightweight, you can carry it all day. Also available with an integrated crimson trace laser in 9 or 40. The M&P Shield M2.0. Visit smith-wesson.com. Before computers. Before engines and automobiles and roads. Before all of this, there was the land. A great ocean of land with mountains black as night. Standing guard over all that is and was and forever will be. This is the Black Hills of South Dakota, the place that made the people who make the best ammo on Earth. Visit black-hills.com for more information. All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN. Get you in there. Let's see. uh, Line 3, Michael's with us out of Georgia. Hey, Michael, you got a story. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when I turned on your radio show and heard y'all talking about dads today, I had already been been missing my dad today more than in other days. It being Father's Day, mm-hmm. and my dad passed away a few years ago. But uh, but in memory of him, I wanted to just share some of the the wise things that he did as sure. far as guns go. Uh, he he collected guns all his life. Uh, and when he passed away, he he left them to me, and uh, and as I was going through some of his papers and all, I, I found a folder where where he had taken pictures of every gun that he had, and he had written the serial numbers on the back of the pictures, and he had even written where he had gotten those guns from, who he had bought them from, and uh, and what those guns cost. Mm-hmm. at that time mm-hmm. and uh and that was just a, a wealth of knowledge that i didn't even know existed when i was you know starting to to sure. go through some of some of some of his stuff uh and it uh it just you know it means so much to me now and i just wanted to encourage your listeners you know if they're collectors and they have kids that they're going to leave their guns to any information that they could write down about that gun or, or mean more to them than they ever think it would. Yeah. And it's then, a, and it's then a great point. Of, I, and I think I would encourage people to do that. And I, I, I love that you're making that point. I'm sorry, I, I, you had more. Uh, yes, sir. And there, there's one other thing, and, and you probably know more about this than, than I do as far as laws go, but he, he left me one gun that required a Class three license. And mm. He he had the you know he had the foresight to uh, to put that gun in a co-op with me, so that at his passing that gun automatically came to me uh, and and I was legal without having to do any additional paperwork. Right, he probably had it in a trust. That's correct. Yeah, yep. and that's that's not a bad way to go. You can put your youngsters uh, on the trust. With you, and actually ends up that uh, neither of you actually owned it. The trust owns it, which is a great way to go. That was pretty smart of him. Yes, sir. And uh, and it just saved me, you know, a lot of hassle and time. And uh, just for him to have the insight to do that, mm-hmm. you know, just really, really means a lot now. I'm sure when I was younger, I, I didn't pay it much attention. <laughs> but Yeah, uh, like a lot of but, us. <laughs> that's right. But uh, but anyway, that's uh, you know that's that's my story, and uh, and I'm just thankful that he had the insight to uh, 
you know, to do that for, for me. And, yep, exactly, Michael. Hey, Michael, thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, if you're going to be passing some guns along, uh, the story, most guns have a story. Maybe a little bit short story. Maybe, hey, I bought this for this much from such and such time. But if there's more to it, if you say, you know, this has been my favorite gun. I use it for duck hunting. I, and you might just talk about that. One of the cool things you can do now, I just was thinking about this. If you say, oh, God, I don't want to sit down and write all that. You don't have to. You got a, you got a phone? Yeah, you got a phone. It'll shoot video? Yeah, it'll shoot video. Set up your phone and shoot video. Tell the stories. And then save the files. And, you know, if, if you're not sure how to do that, you can get somebody to help you. But could, you could sit there and tell the stories. Hey, let me tell you about the duck hunt we went on, you know. And I, I, I'm thinking about right now. My dad, uh, he had a uh, side-by-side shotgun, a Lebeau Corelli, uh, made in Belgium. Really nice. And he was on a hunt. Got his... Uh, Leg hung up in something. He's wading pretty deep. And, I mean, goes down all the way. Uh, completely submerged. Gun gets submerged. The whole deal. And when you got a really nice shotgun like that, and it goes all the way under the water, you got to do something about it. So he took it to uh, actually his buddy, Ken Eversall, who's uh, one of the best uh, shotgun gunsmiths in the country. Took it all apart. Took care of everything and all of that. But it was just one of those deals, just the, the image of him going all the way underwater. You're going, okay, yep, there we go. You know what? If you haven't... If you have hunted ducks and you haven't gone underwater or at least fallen in the water, you haven't hunted ducks enough or at least you haven't hunted them the way that we do. So just my thoughts on that. We're looking for your stories about uh, your dad. And we'll be talking to – we've got two or three other people that want to weigh in on this. Uh, also, uh, I was talking about do you carry around in the chamber when you're hunting. And I said, you know, I think in a lot of cases it's going to be one of those where the answer is – it depends. Uh, David wants to talk about that. We'll get to you in just a minute, David. Don't go anywhere. Dennis, I do want to hear your story. Don't don't go anywhere. We're going to get to you. We've got to take a break in just a second here. But, you know, we're looking for your thoughts. It is Father's Day. Now, think about uh, I have the first gun that my dad ever owned. It's a, a Remington Model 6 Fallen Block 22 Rimfire. And uh, it's short, it's little, but it was perfect. And he's got the story. And, yeah, this is a reminder to me. Hey, Tom, you need to write down that story because you know the story, but the folks coming behind you may not. So then it would be my father's, their grandfather's, or maybe even their grandfather's gun. Yeah, that's my responsibility. I'll get right on this. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. We're back. 866-TALK-GUN. Get you in here. Go into the phones. Line 2. David's out of Casper, Wyoming. Hey, David, carry around in the chamber or an empty chamber. What do you think? Well, I own a uh, small gun company out here in Wyoming. And uh, we do a lot of tactical and non-tactical training. And I, I definitely think out of the chamber. Um, I think a, a good, gun, good gun owner should do a lot of training, um, not only on the range, but in home with a verified safe gun. Um, mm-hmm. Operating that bolt, make sure you're really good and used to it. And the amount of time it takes you to get into position to take a shot you can very easily, without thinking about it, if you're properly trained, have the muscle memory to go ahead and run that slide and get that gun ready to fire. So yeah, I don't well, personally see. No, go, go ahead. ahead. I don't personally see any reason to carry around in the chamber when it only takes a fraction of a second to run that bolt or charge the slide and uh, get it ready to go. And it's funny, I uh, I am of two different minds uh, on some hunting, not all hunting, some hunting I carry an empty chamber and will work the bolt. Uh, I will never carry an empty chamber when I am on my carry gun for self-defense because I work under the assumption I won't, I'll will i have only one hand to draw with and fight with, and the other one I'll be fighting somebody or doing something with it. And yeah, I practiced, you know, I know how to rack a slide on a belt or everything else, that is somewhere less than optimal, like as in that's a sucky way to go about it. Uh, I want a loaded round in the chamber on my carry gun. D- different situation there. 
Yeah, it is a slightly different situation. We still, uh, we prefer to have people to train to bring that gun out of their holster and to their chest where their, their other hand is waiting not only to, you know, push someone away, but to receive the gun and then charge that as you're getting into your firing position. What if you're fighting? Uh, what if you're fighting? Oh, let me ask you a question. What if you're fighting with somebody? Say I'm right handed and I'm my left hand. I'm trying to keep him from killing me, and I can draw with my right hand, but I can't work the slide. Now, what do I do? No, that is, and that is a great situation when it, it is really good to to uh, uh, carry a, a ready weapon. Um, yeah, I mean, and however, we all have to make our choices. I understand that. I just. In my belief, a self-defense gun with an unloaded chamber is an unloaded gun. Correct, correct. That's what we would we would consider an amber weapon. Um, yeah, I, how, I, however, I, if you if you mm-hmm. train if you train to have that that chamber unloaded and you bring mm-hmm. it up and you charge it every time, mm-hmm. whether you carry it loaded or not, if you train with it unloaded, then worst case scenario when you're under duress. In that in it, that emergency situation, if you can charge it, you charge it again and you just drop it around on the ground. Mm-hmm. There's also the situation where you're used to carrying it ready to fire and you drop and pull the trigger and whoops, it wasn't chambered that time. And then you really got a mess. Um, but going back to the hunting issue, mm-hmm. uh, we also do a fair amount of gunsmithing. And uh, the, the, the most frequent problems we have um, gunsmithing wise is malfunction safeties and ejectors. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you've got your, your carrying hunting and your safety malfunction, say you fall and you break the lever off or the spring breaks, or you get a whole bunch of gunk in it, then you've got a weapon that you can no longer fire. Once again, if you just run that bolt and right. you're carrying unloaded, you're well, going to yeah, be good to I, go as I time. say, I don't, I don't trust safeties. Uh, and, you know, in my holster, I don't have no problem with that. I use guns with safeties, without safeties. Uh, on my loaded or my hunting bolt action rifle, depending on where I am and what I'm doing, I often will have the chamber empty when I'm moving. Now, if I sit down, I'm going to be glassing an area. You know, I might load it. It just kind of depends. Like I say, there's no one answer. It just depends. Look, I, and I appreciate the call, and I appreciate your thoughts on that, David. Thank you, sir. I um, I fall very squarely in the category in the camp of uh, not carrying an empty chamber, of always having a round in the chamber. Why would I want to give up one round? And people say, well, you know, you're probably only going to use three because the average gunfight is only like two or three rounds. Okay, great. What if your fight's not average? What if you need the very last one? When I have a seven-round mag, I put it in, rack the slide, take the magazine out, put another round in it, and put it back in the gun. So I want maximum number of rounds in the magazine plus one in the chamber. That's just kind of the way I roll. Simple as that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dennis, Ken, don't go anywhere. I'm going to take a quick break, come back. That way it'll give us plenty of time on the backside. Randy, don't go anywhere. We're going to get to you as well. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back. Now at LibertySafe.com, you can buy a Liberty Safe at a great price and receive 12 months interest-free payments with zero down and 0% APR, with some safes as low as $20 a month on approved credit. Peace of mind, lifetime warranty, and in-home delivery service. Go to LibertySafe.com now for 12 months interest-free payments with zero down and 0% APR. LibertySafe.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. you carry a gun you need training your concealed carry class was definitely not training but time money and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school the trusted folks at gun talk can help 
Can Shield Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShopGunTalk.com. ShopGunTalk.com. Built to perform in the harshest conditions, the Ruger American Pistol can take it all, from ice to dust and everything in between. The Ruger American Pistol features a short take-up trigger, Novak sights, and a recoil-reducing barrel cam with low mass slide for reduced felt recoil, plus a modular grip system with three sizes to fit almost any hand. Check it out at Ruger.com. The Ruger American Pistol, because anything else would be un-American. Dennis is with us out of Grants Pass, Oregon. Hey, Dennis, talk to me about uh, the story with your dad. Yeah, yeah, I just, you know, actually I could talk a whole bunch on the last conversation you had. That was fantastic. <laughs> but anyway, let's, yeah, I want to talk about my dad. This is his day, not mine. Okay. Anyway, yeah, he came from Illinois. Actually, we all came from Illinois. I and mean, we moved to Southern California. And he didn't. Hunt. He didn't really show me how to hunt. All of a sudden, I started hunting, and I, I never forget taking him out one day deer hunting in Southern California. This I'm talking 50 years ago, when things were a little bit different than they are right now. Mm-hmm. And we went out hunting, and we were kind of unsuccessful. And we was driving back home, and all of a sudden, we pull off side road, and we see this buck standing up on the side of the hill up there. And we're sitting there looking at him, and we say, yeah, that's a legal buck. And my dad walks up. He's got the gun in his hand. He says, well, is anybody going to shoot it? Nobody said nothing. I said, bang, one shot through the neck. <laughs> he drops. <laughs> but for, I mean, a couple of yards away. I mean, but he did not teach me to shoot. He knew how to shoot. I mean, he was mm-hmm. Illinois. He hunted rabbits. And so he was a hunter. Oh, you know, now he's 90 years old and he packs a, I think he packs a three eighty. He's got concealed weapons permit. Oh, and darn. Well, you know, well, he's, he's got nine millimeter too, but he Let me, let me ask you, do, do you still go shooting with him? You know, he, no, I, 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 I'm so sad to say, you know, now my boy, that's another situation. You know, I, I take him out. Now I'd be his dad, but, and, uh, he could, I put out a dime one time. At 100 yards, he put two holes in it. Look like one. You know, it's just it's not fair that they have those young eyes and they can see so well. My son, when he was really young, would do the same thing to me. I appreciate it, man. Great story about hunting with your dad. Let me keep running. Uh, Ken is with us on four out of Washington State. Hey, Ken, you're on Gun Talk. Hi there, Tom. Yeah, yes, I've sir. got a range report for you. Good. Uh, yesterday, uh, for the second year in a row, Bremerton Police Department hosted a uh, retired officer shoot for the uh, nationwide carry qualification. Right. And there were about uh, 25 or 30 people who showed up. And uh, it was uh, the weather was beautiful, warm, and uh, all these old timers qualified okay. <laughs> That's for uh, HR 218? Yes. Yeah, that's the, uh, if you're a retired police officer, you can qualify to, for concealed carry through uh, that national law, H.R. 218. That's great. So right. what's our, the range our, report? Our, our state's got a 25-round uh, uh, course mm-hmm. that's uh, used for all the, all the different agencies in the state if they wanted to qualify for that. And uh, I did pretty good. I got a 98.8 on, uh, on both guns that I fired. Wow, which guns did you take? I had a Beretta 380, an older one, and a, a, a G36 Glock 45 Auto. Nice. So, do you, as a former law enforcement officer, do you carry all the time? 
<laughs> as much as I can, yes. Yeah, same same here. You know, if I'm not absolutely prohibited from carrying, I've got it with me. Yeah, yeah. After I after I did 22 years in the army, I did 26 for the sheriff's office, and then when I retired there, uh, after 30 days, I went right back to work for the courthouse security detail as their range master <clears throat> for another 14 years. Holy cow. Oh, man. Well, Ken, thank you. Great, great story. I love that. Let me get down to Randy on three out of uh, Hardin, Montana. Hey, Randy, you're on Gun Talk. Hey, Tom. Yes, I sir. just wanted to, to chime in on the Terry one and load it or, or not while you're hunting. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, keep one in the pipe when, you, when you're out hunting, always. And a uh, couple reasons for that. The first one, what is the first rule they teach you in hunter safety? What's that? Treat every gun as if it were loaded. Right. And so if you're if you've got that mindset, every time you pick up a gun, it's loaded. Mm-hmm. And 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 then you've you've trained yourself to keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction, and uh, be aware that hey, that thing is loaded. Mm-hmm. Then what's the problem with carrying one out in the woods loaded if you're act, acting that way? Well, that's what I say. It, it, it depends. Let me ask you a question. You you hunt in Montana, I take it. I do. Got some pretty rough country around there. Yes, we do. You ever fallen down? Oh, of course. Okay, that's the reason. Well, I've never had a gun go off when I fell. So far, so good. Yet. So far, so good. You know what? Well, if you're if you're if you're uh, conscious of keeping that gun pointed in the right direction, you know, even if you fall. Um, I, I agree with you. I understand what you're saying. I'm not going to disagree at all. Uh, I'm just going to say there are times in certain places when I prefer to carry an unloaded chamber, an empty chamber, knowing that I can always work a bolt quickly. And I, you know, I can't imagine a situation where I could uh, miss a chance at a deer or an elk. But if I did, that is something I'm willing. They're not so important to me that I have to take a risk. And And, and I get it. That's why I always say it depends. It's your call, man. It's uh, keep your finger off the trigger, keep you know the muzzle in a safe direction, and probably everything's going to be just fine. I get it. I just I don't know, uh, and that's why I kind of threw it out there. It's not right or wrong. It's an individual choice, but I'm curious as to people's thinking of how you got there. Uh, Randy, you said there's more than one reason for. Uh, you know, for carrying a a loaded round. What what else? What else comes to mind? Well, well, the other one you said you know you couldn't see missing an opportunity. You know, you get down on the river bottom with some of those wily white tails. Mm-hmm. They hear you run that bolt, and they're gone. Yeah, you're right. And honestly, if I were slipping along quietly in a little river bottom hunting white tails, I would have a loaded chamber. I absolutely right. would. If, now, if I'm uh, trying to cover some ground up on a ridge and I'm hunting muleys and I'm just moving fast and it's kind of nasty, gnarly country, I might have an, uh, an empty chamber there. And then when I get to where I'm actually going to sit and hunt, I might put one in the pipe again. Different call, but yeah, no, I agree with you. If you're slipping along and everything's you're trying to be really quiet and you see, and I've done it. I mean, I've slipped along like that and had a whitetail not more than 15 yards from me, just right there. I don't think I could have worked the bolt quietly enough to get away with it. I don't think I could have pulled that one off. Right, and they don't stand there for very long. You know, they no, might give you a they couple don't. seconds, and, and then they're gone no matter what you do. <laughs> That's so. it. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your thoughts on that. Oh, Lord, I had a, a, mule, a not a mule deer, a white tail. I was walking along in the rain in Alabama, and out of the mist, I walked right up on this buck, and he's standing there looking at me. We're probably 15 yards apart, and I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking, I know that I cannot move fast enough to get this gun on him. And he's looking at me, and it was like this. It seemed like 30 seconds. It was probably five, maybe 10 seconds. We stood it. Just, and all of a sudden, it's like, poof. He was gone in this mist and fog. It was almost at the end of it, you're thinking, did that really happen? It was so odd that I just I knew there was no way. It happens that way, but you know what? Great memories. That's what we're really after is those great memories. 866-TALK-GUN. Hi, 
I was thinking about uh, Father's Day. My dad, I was looking at the picture uh, that he had, or one of his pictures, in one of his many, many articles, probably thousands of magazine articles that he wrote. And it's uh, me probably nine years old, ten years old, shooting from a sitting position with my little Browning twenty two rifle. He had a high standard pistol with him. And I'm uh, shooting left-handed. He's talking about, uh, in the article, about look for left eye dominance. He spotted that early on for me and got me started shooting left-handed, which worked out very well. And now we routinely check shooters for left eye dominance. So just one of those things. I have so many stories, so many memories of my dad that involved shooting guns. Of course, we had guns everywhere. Um, he was a really good shot. He was able to pass that along, but he, he passed along to me. It was interesting. He was competitive without being aggressively competitive, if that makes sense. He liked to shoot trap, went to the Grand American, took me with him. I remember seeing Roy Rogers shooting trap at the Grand American trap shoot when I was just a kid. I thought that was very cool. Um, just exposed me to the world and... I know that there are so many different pressures, so many opportunities for kids now, whether it's electronic or organized, 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 scheduled kids. One of the things I like about guns and shooting is it's not as scheduled. It's not like we have, you know, dance class here and we've got, you know, this thing at, you know, this time we've got to be there. You go out and you do it and you do it at your own pace. Sporting clays is a great example. You just walk the trails, do that. A thought, a thought for you, and I know, you know, a lot of people are going to hear this after Father's Day. doesn't matter, whenever. Uh, if you're a dad, turn around and take your kids out shooting, whether they're adults or young, younger. If your dad's around and you can, how about going out shooting with him? Take him out. It may, you say, yeah, I know, he lives in, out of town. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, I know. You cannot imagine how much it might mean to him. If you guys used to do that, and, and yeah, I get it. It may take a lot of effort. You cannot imagine what that could mean to him to go do that with you. The gift is time. Because time is the commodity we all have an absolute same amount of. We don't know how much we're going to have. But nobody's time is worth more than anybody else's time. We all have the same amount. You may have more dollars or fewer dollars, but we have time. And whatever it is you spend your time on is that tells people, tells the world what's important to you. Time spent with, that's the important thing. So I would just say, you know, if you could do that, pull it, pull it off. Maybe you can go out and do a little shooting, maybe some hunting. Maybe just sit with Dad and talk about some of the guns. Tell me about the stories. Tell me about this. What did you do with this? Do you remember the time? Might be a good idea to get out the recorder, get out that phone, shoot the video. Uh, in the meantime, you know, just kind of think about the whole idea of uh, what it means to be a shooting family and what goes along with that. The responsibility, the, I, I guess, allowing youngsters to have access to guns and training them acknowledges in them that what you think of them, that you think they're ready. You're not babying them. <laughs> you don't have any 35-year-olds living at home when they get raised shooting, I don't think. I just don't think that happens. Well, in the meantime, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Thank you for everything that you have done. Uh, I have great kids, and uh, they have both contacted me today, so we appreciate that. In the meantime, go out and do a little bit of shooting. Take your dad with you. Take your kids with you. Take your family with you. It's a family sport. Remember, he had just had 8,000 kids shoot a million rounds. That's fun. Do some more of that. We'll see you next week.